Last time on Apollo Justice, Ace Attorney. The court accepts this into evidence! Damn, I finally got a gun! Only took me, like, 50 years of judging around. Just fires it at Apollo. Oh my god, I'm bleeding! Game over. Bad ending. Hey guys, right in here, and welcome back to Apollo Justice, Ace Attorney. Last time we finally got back to the courtroom, I'm quite happy about that because I was tired of being excluded out of the courtroom for a while. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like the courtroom sections are the best part of the game. Like, the out- It's so weird, because I feel like the outer court areas of the game are necessary, but they're the most boring parts. Although, at least, the characters are entertaining during them. Anyways, last time we were in the middle of a question that I barely remember, because it's been so long. Is that the witness will testify as to what happened after the shot was fought? Okay, we were about to get a new, uh, testimony anyways. So, we're fine. We are absolutely fine. Oh, it was this dude. I completely forgot about him. I don't- uh, uh, I don't want more of you. <clears throat> I cannot prevent the killer from leaving the scene. Nor could I simply leave the scene in good conscience. Ergo, I used my cell phone to call the police. But you didn't. Until the police arrived at the scene ten minutes later, I saw no one else. Why didn't you chase the killer? He was, as you say, a killer. <laughs> of course I could have run him down, yet would he have done what yet what would he have done when cornered? Sadly, it takes more than an aptitude for solving quadratic equations to know that. Oh, I can't even solve those. Did the testimony earlier or not prove the defendant's presence at the scene? And do we also know now that there was no one else there? It seems clear that we have our killer. Does it not? Does it not, Mr. Justice? I better find a way to take his testimony down quickly. I don't like you still. So, I'm sorry if this is probably going to take me a bit, because it's actually been a long time since the last recording session. Uh, nor could I leave the scene in good conscience. I feel like the hook, the kick here is... Uh, don't we have a cell phone in our... We found it in the Maractus Clinic, garbage beneath a car. Who could have dropped it? Could it be his? The thing is, we have no proof whose it could be. And even when examining it, it's pink and it has a clock on it. Or like a little stopwatch. And it doesn't really have any engravings or anything on it. I bet we're going to get to take off that battery pack on the back or something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press him about the phone. Hold it! Wasn't your first thought to call an ambulance? It could be said that I have dabbled in medicine. The inquiry I witnessed, namely a single shot to the head, tends to result in death. Ergo, there was no need for me to call an ambulance. Oh, a perfect syllogism. Okay. A proof in three parts. Exquisite, simply exquisite. Ugh, he actually looks like he's going to cry. What, what are you doing over there with your murder face? Okay, um, until this police arrived at the scene ten minutes later, no one else. Can you tell us in detail about these ten minutes? I stood in a state of heightened awareness. <laughs> Anything could have happened at any moment. Anyone could appear from any direction. Is that all? No one came. Nothing happened. At all. I saw it all, which is to say I saw nothing. It was late at night. It's not odd to think that there would be a few people around in the park. So he just stood there watching? Huh. Not much to go on there. Stop staring at me with your murder face. Jersey, if you've got something to say, by all means say it. The witness is way too self-assured. There's got to be a weakness somewhere in his testimony. Jersey, if you just want to say something, say it to me. Because I'm barely remembering this. I could not prevent the killer from leaving the scene. So apparently, by the way, Trucy's acting, I feel like... Let's just check through the evidence real quick. Gun has nothing to do with it. That's from the metallic heart thing that barely matters at the moment. I guess our only real option is to keep pressing. I don't see anything. I could not prevent the killer from leaving the crime scene. Which way did the killer run? By that time, it was clear the killer had noticed me. 
Naturally, he ran into the opposite direction. That would mean that he ran the opposite direction from the Kataki Mansion. Akhtung, don't even think about pointing out... Wait. Don't even think about pointing out that he was going away from his home. All he had to do was loop back once and he was out of sight. Ugh. How did he know that's where I was going? <laughs> I get it, Jersey. Chill. Nor could I simply leave in good conscience. You are, you are certainly composed for someone who had just witnessed a killing. If one is to devote one's life to the pursuit of science, one must never flinch at the sight of a little blood. Nor be so moved by a chemical discovery that one drops on one's flask upon the lab room floor. <laughs> oh, cool answer. Very cool. Hmm. So nothing strange about how he acted. Apollo, I'm gonna murder you from over here! She looks like she has something to say. Uh, I can't find a single problem with that testimony. Had enough at last, her forehead. Maybe it's time to back off a bit? Yeah. Ugh. There's nothing fishy about his testimony at all. It appears that there are no objections to the witness's current testimony. There are any number of ways to explain the lack of prints on the pistol, I assure you. Perhaps the killer really was wearing gloves which wiped the previous user's prints off. Then after the deed was done, this fell out of his pocket as he was throwing the gun away. A mistake befitting of a small-time punk, in my opinion. No, no! I'm gonna, I, if I just get a game over screen, I'm gonna lose it. Seems we're at the end of the line here. No, it can't be all. How unfortunate. It seems you weren't cut out to stand on the same stage as me. Were you? Like, you guys gave me a bunch of pronunciation tips for all of his weird German words and the meaning behind some of them. And I don't remember them. So I'm just going to keep saying them exactly how it looks. For now. Until I can remember. I love how he's still calling him Forehead. I believe this brings the cross-examination to a close. The court will now declare a verdict for the defendant Walkie Kataki. Hold it. Oh, uh, wait. Did Trucy just yell, hold it? Wait, what the fu? What is happening? What? 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 Why does... Why, why is he wearing her hat? Why did he take her hat off and then threaten to stab her? Like, I'm gonna kill you for this hat. It's like, no, that's my favorite hat. It's like, you're gonna die or I get the hat. There's a single choice. <laughs> Trucy, nobody move. What's the meaning of this? Who are you? I love how I was just standing there like, eh, uh, it's fine. There will be no verdict in this court, not yet. Wait, are you one of the Katakis? The Katakis? You mean the notorious gangsters? If you want to see, if you want to see me give the pretty girl a new smile, do as I say, if you don't want to see me. A jaw in the court for 20 minutes. What? That this court will not bow to pressure from the likes of... Her judge. Huh? I see a little point in further aggravating this gentleman. Uh, um, uh. Recess, 20 minutes or I promise you you'll regret it. Oh, wh <laughs> what? I just flew away. Turned invisible. Wait, how did he disappear so fast? Come to the defendant lobby, Apollo. Wait, Trucy said that. I suppose I have no choice but to adjourn for a 20-minute recess. Bailiff, catch that mysterious man. That's a new one, having someone, like, threaten to be stabbed in court. To be continued, we've only been playing for, like, a grand total of 10 minutes. <laughs> sure, I will save. And I'll also use a save state, because I'm cheap like that, and half the time the saves aren't working. <laughs> June 16th, 1117 AM, District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Trucy! Trucy! Where'd you go? You move quick, Apollo. Good show. Good show. Tr Trucy, you're okay. I'm so glad she's okay. I, I I was really scared for a second that she'd just get murdered right off the bat in the game, and I'm like, no, no, don't let that happen already. <laughs> Apollo's crying, uh-huh. 
Dude, chill out. It's okay. She's okay. Don't cry, Apollo. <laughs> Those good-for-nothing gangsters. There are some things you just don't do. I'm pressing charges. Wait, just calm down, Apollo. Or else... Oh, what? <laughs> oh my god. That had to be one of the most intricate animations I have ever seen in this series. That is awesome. That is awesome. And she looks way cuter without a hat. I'll admit that. Ah, oh, what, what the heck was that? Surprised? This is one of my best tricks, the amazing Mr. Hat. <laughs> Mr. Hat? You look marvelous, darling. <laughs> Apollo's just like, all right, um, if you need me, I'm gonna go, like, overdose somewhere on that couch over there while singing to the judge or something. He's a big hit on stage at the Wonder Bar. Yes, I am a big hit, ha ha ha. You're also a master ventriloquist, apparently. Well, what do you think? Do you like it? You mean you, Juicy, there are some things you just don't do. I feel like that's Apollo's catchphrase for, or catchphrase for when people start doing things wrong. He's like, you just don't do that. It's evil. I, I'm pressing charges. <laughs> Apollo, now it's not the time to be threatening me. It's you who's being threatened here. Huh? Remember when you said Walkie's, remember what you said to Walkie's father yesterday? You promised you'd save his son. But, but that testimony was rock solid. What are you suggesting I do? Look, once the judge declares a verdict, it's all over. If I can use my talent to stop that from happening, I will. Trucy, no more staged abductions, please. I'm not talking about magic, Apollo. I know when the witness isn't confident, I can perceive what he's feeling. What? Does she have some sort of awesome power too? It might it might not mean anything, but it's all we've got. You can see what he's feeling? Yeah, I'm very confused at this point too, Apollo. Don't worry, you're not the only one who's just baffled by some of the random things this game decides to pull at times. Think back, Apollo. Think back to the times when there was a contradiction in his testimony. All the times. All the times there was a contradiction. I remember. I don't remember. <laughs> um, I don't remember, honestly. Um, actually, I don't remember them exactly. Good thing I do. There were two times when he made statements that he wasn't confident in. Each time there was a contradiction. In his hand he held, yes, a pistol. It was pointed at the man pulling the stand. Tossing the pistol aside, he fled from the scene. I don't understand what the motion I'm looking for here is. It's probably like Apollo's super perception ability that I have to use, but I don't know. It doesn't seem like he is doing anything out of the ordinary. I don't know. It just... It's a little weird right now. He said the man tossed aside a pistol. But it turned out he wasn't sure, and sure enough, there was a contradiction. Well, that's true, but how does that even help us? Didn't you notice anything? Well, wow, God, you're stupid, Polly. Whatever he made a statement he wasn't confident in, he displayed a certain habit. In his hand, he held, yes, a pistol. Oh, for a second I thought it was like, every time he lies, he holds a gun. <laughs> In his hand, he held, yes, a pistol. What was the habit? Did you see it the very moment he said the word pistol? His fingers got all tense and he fiddled with the corner of the page on his book. How, wait, how am I supposed to see that? Well, I could see it and I'm just a dumb magician little girl. You suck, Polly. How else do you even think Daddy would seven years without losing a game of poker? What? Oh, so is that the explanation for it? I always sat next to Daddy during big matches. Oh, so that's how he figured out the trick. I could see what his opponents were feeling. Oh, okay, that makes a lot more sense then. I thought it was just like... Wow, look at all this amazing luck I have! And Phoenix just like pulls out a full hand of aces every single time and he's like, Whoa, this is amazing. You mean all that's how Mr. Wright won all those games? It's not cheating officially. I wasn't looking at their hands or anything. And I wasn't there all the time either. 
Daddy's quite good at poker after all, but not good enough to go undefeated that long. Great, so he cheated. But what does that do for us? <laughs> I don't believe this. You have to listen to his testimony one more time. No, scratch that. You have to watch his testimony. Perceive the truth. Watch a testimony. Perceive the truth. God, this is Persona 4. The only thing I'm the only thing I'm perceiving is that I'm going to lose. Not true. Huh? Daddy said so. <laughs> he said you have the power, Apollo. You got the power. Oh god, I can't even do that in Trucy's voice without like killing myself. <laughs> Mr. Wright said that. Watch the testimony, perceive his true feelings. Is she serious? Time's up. Sorry, I can't think of any other way out of this one, Apollo. What was what was that she said before the trial started? Huh, Mr. Wright's not here today? He said his old foot injury was acting up. Yes, he smiled when he said we'd be fine as long as you're there, Trucy. Is this what he meant by us being fine? Well, methods aside, she did avoid one guilty verdict already today. Time to show this court what I'm made of. Get ready for justice! Arthur just bursts in the door and he's like, Did someone say justice? And he's like, Not yet, Arthur. Not yet. And he's like, oh. Let's do it. Apollo. You know, I'm starting to think I can do this. I knew you could do it all along. Oh, one more thing. Hmm? Oh, Mr. Hat! Try to cover for Mr. Hat the best you can. I just flew in from the coast and the boy are- and the boy are- wait, what? I just flew in from the coast and boy are my arms tired. Right. <sighs> I like Hatless. I mean, I get it's her whole magician thing, but Hatless Trucy is way better. All right. Now we have this in the bag or something. Hopefully. Maybe. Gort is now back in session. Right. We're fine. <laughs> Ahem. I'd like to say to the young lady standing next to you, Mr. Justice. Oh, you mean me? Don't you have anything to report? Anything concerning the mysterious phantom in the silk top hat? Oh, right, um, him. Don't worry about him. I settled that. You settled that? Yes, uh, I killed him with my own bare hands. And then Trucy tortured him for, like, 20 minutes. It was great. Uh, yes, it was, a uh, out-of-the-court settlement. Right. Perhaps Fraulein would have us believe it was nothing more than a passing dream. Did he see through this completely? I bet he already knows what's going on. I bet he saw the entire thing. A fantastic illusion. Now you see it, now you don't, am I right? I think he's on to me. <laughs> Maybe. I wish he would stop being so... so cool. <laughs> Let us dispense with these niceties and get straight to the matter. Oh, I love that. That's a good voice for him. What are your plans for our gifted witness? Right, right. The defense would like to request another cross-examination. Because, because, because I forgot to ask something. <laughs> That's a good reason. There was no issue with the previous testimony. I will grant your request, however, but this court will not permit stalling for time. Understood, Your Honor. Don't forget, Apollo. When he isn't sure about something, he has a habit of fiddling with his book. I'll be looking at your hands so close. You don't even know. <laughs> I cannot prevent the killer from leaving the scene. Nor could I simply leave the scene in good conscience. Oh. Is he doing it? Ergo, I used my cell phone to call the police. Until the book arrived at the... Wait, until the book... <laughs> until the book arrived at the scene and killed everyone. Until the police arrived at the scene ten minutes later, I saw no one else. Okay, so it was the cell phone statement. We're gonna figure out, hey, the cell phone we found is his. Who knew? I'm not- I'm not sure I'm qualified to watch testimonies after all. Focus, Apollo! Find his weak spot. Focus? If only we're that easy. My ears hear what he says, my eyes see his expression. Do I have to do something more? What other senses do I have? Oh, here comes my power again! Wha- what's this? My bracelet? Wait, what? His bracelet? He gets a magic power from his bracelet? What's going on? My bracelet feels different somehow. I think Daddy was right. You can see it, can't you, Apollo? You're almost there. Find the weak spot in his testimony. I know this sounds crazy, 
but my bracelet is trying to tell me something. <laughs> Cross examination. From shot, shot to call. I cannot prevent the killer from leaving the scene. Okay, so I'm just gonna skip straight to that one. Can I like present the bracelet somehow? Is that not? Is that an option? I don't think it is. I'm gonna press it though. So you called immediately after witnessing the murder. The police undoubtedly have a record of the call. Why not check with them? Wait, Apollo. This has to be it. Wait, what do you mean? Wait, you mean his habit? Don't forget, Apollo. When he isn't sure about something, he has a habit of fiddling with his book. The only time he even had the book open was here. Which means this is the place to look for his habit. I don't know how I know, but I know. Know what? It's my bracelet. It's different somehow. <laughs> I can feel it reacting to something about the witness. Okay, this is getting more and more ridiculous. <laughs> Your bracelet? I'm not sure how I get this focus stuff you were talking- I'm not sure I get this focus stuff you are talking about, Trucy. But, I have a feeling that trusting my bracelet is the way to go. Oh, there's a little bracelet icon up there now, huh? Okay, I just need to touch my bracelet as it reacts to the testimony. Whoa! <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my goodness. I can see in 4D! This is great! It's just Apollo wearing, like, 3D glasses. Like, oh my god, this is the best thing of my life. <laughs> What's going on? I can see the witness's face. His expression so clearly, it's filling my mind. I can see nothing else. Hear nothing else. Apollo? Trucy, what's happening to me? This is what I meant by focusing. Focusing? In this state, you can see everything, Apollo. Everything the witness does. That's great, but this is kind of freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> Just like for Mr. Stickler's twitch, his habit, you remember it, right? Sure, when he says something he's not sure of, he fiddles with a, with a page of his book. Got it. Right now, you're looking at the witness's face. And your eyes are sort of... And your eyes are sort of bugging out. <laughs> I'll bet they are. First, move your focus... Uh, move your focus of attention down to Mr. Stickler's hand. His hand? You know what to look for now, but you have to be looking at the right place. She's right, I can only see his face like this. Time to try changing my viewpoint. Okay. Perfect, now you're ready. Oh, okay, so that was it? That's all I had to do? I'm really curious about how Mr. Wright even knows about Apollo's super special secret power. It's very interesting. Ready for what? Ready to perceive the truth behind the Twitch. Perceive? Try listening to the witness's testimony as you talk. Wait, try listening to the witness talk as you focus. Then watch for his habit. Right, right. You mean when he fiddles with the page. That's right. That's your signal to look closer to perceive. Find his weak spot and I'll be able to give him the royal flush. Spoken like a true poker head's daughter. It's <laughs> a weird thing to say. I'm a magician, thank you very much. So I have to pay attention to his words, and his fingers. Don't worry, if you miss it, you can always try again. Right, look out, nervous Twitch, here comes justice. Justice, ergo. I used my cell phone. To call... The police. Here again, I guess. Ergo, I use my cell phone. It seems like he stopped twitching after the first sentence, but... Proceed! Did we actually do this right? Did I... Did I do... <laughs> I, I saw it just now. I could see it. Mr. Mr. Justice, you've been staring at his crotch for like... Five minutes, can you please stop at you're making the defendant uncomfortable? Uh, all this banging of deaths, it's quite bad for my circulation, you know. Mr. Stickler, allow me to ask you a simple question. Why did you fiddle with the page of your book just now? The very moment you mentioned your cell phone. What, what are you talking about? I'm curious now about this cell phone of yours. 
Mind if I ask a few questions? Hmm, what to ask, what to ask? Ask to see his phone. Yeah. Mr. Stickler, please show me your cell phone. Oh, what, what, why? Whatever for? Show me and you'll find out. Well, well, I can't. I don't have it, you see. I don't have... It was probably smarter to ask for the model number, but we can ask for all three, probably. You don't have it? Mr. Stickler, is this your cell phone? Yeah, where did, where did you get that? That's a phone from yesterday. Look, a cell phone. Someone dropped it beneath this tire. If the car moved, it would be crushed for sure. Huh, I wonder if it belongs to the doctor here. How strange, Mr. Stickler. Can you explain why your cell phone is sitting here in my hand at this very moment? Wait a minute, what is the meaning of this? This cell phone was found yesterday. In the Maractus Clinic garage. The Maractus? Why, that's where the victim lived. You're... Th that's... that's impossible. <laughs> Look at him, he's just flipping through his book like, I need to find something. Mr. Stickler, you lied to the court, didn't you? If your cell phone is here, how could you have called the police? <laughs> I don't even know what to sound out what he's trying to say. It's it's true. I didn't have my cell phone that night. That's why that is why it can be said that I called the police from a public pay phone. A pay phone? Oh come on, we did this. We already had the same kind of thing with the uh, um what was it? It was the first case of the second game, I believe. With the whole, like, I use my cell phone. No, you didn't. You're right, I didn't. Or why did you have to go to a... Or things like that. I don't know, I feel like we've done this before, but they kind of have to overlap after a while, you know? A payphone? So you didn't call on your cell phone after all? Just where was this payphone located, Mr. Stickler? Well, to indicate it with a st startlingly high degree of accuracy, it was right around here. That's not very high. That's quite a ways from the park. But, but why did you lie? There can be only one reason. He didn't want the court to know he had lost his cell phone. Because it was found. In the victim's garage. What, what, what are you saying? Mr. Stickler, you broke into the Maractus Clinic, or the Maractus Clinic garage on the night of the murder. This cell phone tells all. Why the hell did you buy a pink cell phone? I'm not going to judge you for your taste, but this is a very tacky color for your cell phone. But, but that's ridiculous. That makes it sound like... Like I snuck into this, this fellow's garage to commit some crime. As though I were trying to kill him. Oh, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. I really have to say, I have listened to all the themes. I guess I spoiled myself on a lot of the themes a long time ago. And so far, Apollo's is my absolute favorite. I don't know about any of the Edgeworth investigations or the 3DS ones, but I know about, like, from the first game to here, so... I think this one is my favorite. I like it even more than the very first game's theme. Or, I think this is the cornered theme, I believe, or the pursuit. I'm not sure what it's called. Well, Dr. Maractus was killed that night. But, well, yes, but, but no. This line of reasoning has to be against the rules. Yes, it's true I lost my cell phone. But can you prove that I lost it that night? Hmm, well, Mr. Justice... That cell phone was dropped the night of the murder. It does raise considerable suspicions as to a connection with the crime. Now's your chance, Apollo. Connect Mr. Stickler to the crime. Oh, he's already connected enough. I just have to prove it. Well, do I have a piece of evidence that, w that can do the job? Can I prove the cell phone was dropped on the night of the murder? Yes, I can. Of course I have evidence. Ooh, I like your swagger, eh, forehead. Hit it. <laughs> I I actually really like him as a prosecutor. That because he's so he's so like I don't know, he's just so chilled out compared to the first three prosecutors that are constantly trying to wreck you in every single possible way. He's just having a good time. The court will see this evidence, Mr. Justice. Hit it as they say. <laughs> Hit it as they said in my day, back when I had hairspray. Um sir, did you even ever have hair? You ask another question about my hair, I'm going to send you to prison right away. The evidence proves- this evidence proves that the cell phone was dropped- wait. The evidence that proves the cell phone was dropped on the night of the murder is... Um, I actually don't know what that is. 
Um, it wouldn't be the panties. It wouldn't be the car. The broken windshield? No, that doesn't prove anything. Torn off the car that hits Mr. Wright fits the car at the Maractus Clinic. The evidence that proves the cell phone was dropped the night of the murder. Check. Is there any damage on the phone? I mean, it was under a car, so it's not exactly. I don't see any scratches or anything. I'm just kind of looking around for, like, a broken screen or something, but nothing happened to the phone. Shoot. Shoot, 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 shoot. I don't know what to pick. I don't know what to do. The only, like, line of uh, reasoning I can possibly see in this is that he had to get away so quickly. I mean, just with the evidence we have. Is that he had to get away so quickly that he was rushing home and he hit Mr. Wright and the mirror broke off. So, that's the reason there was that car crash and he just kept going. So, I'm just gonna present the mirror because that's all we really have, honestly. Oh, thank God. <laughs> We've been getting pretty lucky. Uh, I'll have to say that. Like, sometimes I feel like my line of reasoning goes over the top with what this game actually wants me to have. And that's, that's what messes me up the most is when I just overthink things. That's a side view mirror. As it so happens, Dr. Maraxis' car was in an accident. So that took place the night of the murder. An accident? An accident. <laughs> an accident? An accident? An accident? An accident. Can we stop this? It just, uh, it just happened, a, it happened a little after 9 p.m. just outside People Park. Our murder scene. Dr. Maraxis' car hit a pedestrian. What are you trying to say? From the absence of a mirror, it's clear that the car was parked after the incident. Which means it was parked there after 9pm on the night of the murder. If your cell phone had been dropped before the car was parked in that garage, then it would have been crushed. After all, it was lying on the ground, right under the wheel. Ergo, Mr. Stickler. The only time you could have dropped this in that garage was after 9 p.m. the night of the murder in the park. <laughs> oh, I wonder what his breakdown's going to be like. I want to see it. Mr. Stickler, you know what this means? You did break into the victim's garage that night. This is most unexpected, Mr. Justice. Are you naming the witness as a suspect in the murder of Pal Maractus? No, no, stop. This is too much. This can't be happening. P -p 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 Prosecutor, say something. I suppose it's worth saying this. No connection has been found between Wesley Stickler and Palmeractus. That is other than this. I believe our next testimony will be most relevant revelatory revelations. You know, the best Fire Emblem game in the series? Ah, oh, just kidding. Is the witness prepared? Y yes, 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 your honor. I know that face. That's the face of guilt. Stickler's truth. That night, yes, I went to the supermarket. I must have dropped my cell phone on the way back. When I was walking through the park, it hap I happened to witness the crime. I saw the killer, the victim, the stand. All as clear as day. It was him I saw the defendant at the scene. I feel like something's wrong with that stand statement. Yes, but your cell phone was lying in a garage. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, well, as you can see, my model of cell phone has a defect. It's given to rolling. It's quite plain and simple when I drop it alongside the road, you know. What? Looks like a normal cell phone to me. <laughs> In any case, Mr. Justice, the cross-examination, please. That's funny. My bracelet didn't react at all during that testimony. His nervous, habits, his nervous habit must not be acting up. I didn't sense anything either, actually. Looks like you're on your own this time around. Right, no problem, I hope. Here comes justice! <laughs> All I, I... I need to know why Apollo has such an unhealthy... I, I don't know if it's unhealthy. I mean, it's not, like, awful for him, but... I want to know where his obsession with justice comes from. Stickler's truth. 
That night, yes. Yeah, so, oh, now it's a button up here. Awesome. That's great. Okay. That night, yes, I went to the supermarket. Press. So you went shopping, which means... You were holding a grocery bag when you witnessed the murder taking place? Uh, well, well, yes, of course. Incidentally, the prosecution has received no report of this domestic detail. Mr. Stickler, can you explain yourself? I mean, I mean, yes, yes, I did. I did go shopping, really. I walked around the supermarket trying out the free samples. It's a deeply spiritual time for me. <laughs> My connection to the old lady when she hands me that shish kebab on a stick and tries to sell it to me is... It's a magical experience. I'm sure the store clerks would disagree. <laughs> I don't know why I find this section so funny. Do you think sampling free food counts as a religion? <laughs> in any case, that night. I sampled to my heart's content and was on my way back home, yes? I must have dropped my cell phone on my way back. That's when you passed in front of the Maractus Clinic. Um, why, yes, that's correct. That took a while. That was a pretty suspicious pause there. Mr. Stickler, do you think you could be a bit more specific? Please show us the exact route you took on the night of the murder. Uh, of course. Ah, uh, finally, we're finding out something else. The supermarket is here, along the main road. My way home from there takes me past the Maractus Clinic. This is probably when I dropped my cell phone. Yet, what was I I walked on unaware of my loss? and walked right into that fateful park. When I was walking through the park, I happened to witness the cr Wait a minute, wait a minute. What- Isn't the whole crux of this the fact that he's saying he walked home? Ma maybe I'm misunderstanding something, but didn't we just say he drove home because there's a broken mirror? Or something of that sort? I feel like I'm misunderstanding something major. And when I was walking through the park, I happened to witness the crime. Which entrance did you enter the park from? Well, to be exact, one might say that I went in from the entrance closest to the Maractus Clinic. The same entrance our victim used. Did you notice anything when you entered? Wheel marks from a noodle stand, for instance? I have no recollection of such a thing, no. Y yet, though I might have missed the tracks, I could not miss what happened next. I'm a keen observer of the obvious, you might say. I saw the killer, the victim stand. Alls. Okay. This part of the testimony is the key, I know it. Should I press him about the killer, the victim, or the noodle stand? Huh. It would have to be something less obvious. The noodle stand! <laughs> Do you remember what happened to the noodle stand? Quite well, yes. For a student of the sciences, a keen observation and healthy curi curiosity are vital. I remember everything. I could even read the sign. I believe it said, er, uh, noodle. Yes, that... Did we just catch him? No, it doesn't say noodle. It says Eldune, doesn't it? Oh, you're going down now. Oh... Oh, you, do you know what I think it is? Did he see it as he was driving away so he saw the reflection backwards? And thank you for telling us that a noodle stand sells noodles. Very enlightening. <laughs> well, Mr. Justice. And um, what about that sign would be important? Very important. The sign on the noodle stand said noodle. It appears the defense has just obtained a vital piece of the testimony. Is this noodle stand's broth really that delicious? We'll have to go sample the wares one of these days. <laughs> I think that's worth adding to the testimony as well. Huh. Whatever sort of noodles that Stan sells, it can't match up to Ivy U's cafeteria. Some apply to the school merely for the taste of our smart noodles. I wouldn't mind a taste of that myself. <laughs> okay. Yep, you're wrong. Sorry, buddy. Whoa, I didn't mean to click there. And... Gotcha! 
And you're absolutely sure the sign read Noodle? Why, just last week, my professor offered me this pr the praise. Or this praise. At least you have a good eyesight, Stickler. I'll give you that. It read, without a doubt, Noodle. I see. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Is that pity I see in your eyes? <laughs> Let's take a look at our map, shall we? So you're claiming that when you saw the sign, you were standing... Here, was it? Although it would have been a bit hard to read the sign from the spot. Y you think so? Mr. Stickler, I'd like you to please take another look at the stand. And carefully read what the sign says. See, the sign actually states the name of the stand's owner. Eldunes. El, 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 inconceivable. I'm certain it was definitely Noodle for sure, positive. I'm afraid your professor was wrong about that eyesight. I wouldn't be so quick to jump to that conclusion. The sign he saw changes everything. Does it? The witness says the sign said Noodle. But he saw it right, but he saw it wrong. I, like, is the fact that he saw it from a rearview mirror right, or is that wrong? He saw it wrong. The answer is quite simple. The witness saw the sign wrong. Oh, it seemed to be the case, yes. Apollo, the only thing that changes is the witness's eyesight. Huh? Okay, so you've proven the witness had bad eyesight and is overconfident. That just proves that he's a bad witness. That doesn't solve the case. How rude. I've not made a single mistake, I assure you. I'm a student of science. Errors are not tolerated in my field, I'll have you know. What if Mr. Stickler is right to be so confident? And if he is right about that sign, what does it mean for the entire case? What would you say if I told you that there's one spot from the sign which... Wait. That there's one spot from which the sign would be read the way Mr. Stickler claims. What? Mr. Justice, show us the spot. When this actually viewed the stand from this location? Um... I don't know where he would have viewed it. Let's see. If he was on the other side of the cart, would he have seen through and saw it the other way? Even over here, it would be correct. So that would mean that he'd have to be... What is this? I don't know what this is. Oh, I got it right. Okay. The witness was standing here on the opposite side. Okay. As long as it was that general, I'm happy. I'm like, he was standing here on the boulder in the middle of the park. Because I could not tell what that was. Yeah, okay, he saw it through the other side. How do you know that? When viewed from the south, the sign of the stand reads Eldunes as we know. However... Oh, okay, so it's not that you can see through it and through the other side it's backwards. It's that there's a sign on the other side that says Noodle. Okay, well, I was close enough. Observe the other side of the stand. Oh, this side says Noodle! Exactly. That's the name of the stand, and it's split between the front and back signs. Look at that jiggle in his hands. Mr. Stickler, you lied to the court. You witnessed the crime for the northern side of the park, not the south, you filthy lying academic. Objection! Oh, you got me! Objection! So what? So what? What does it matter if he saw the killing from the north or the south side? makes no difference at all. He's right. Travel far enough to the, s to the south and you will end up going north. Viewed on a global scale, directions are utterly without meaning. Actually, maybe he's right. What does it change? It changes everything, Apollo. Tracy, why did you go from being like oblivious and dumb to being like the master of the court? <laughs> like... While we were investigating, Trucy did not seem to understand any of the situations that was going on, and now she seems to be like a master of the court. I don't understand. Trucy? Remember his testimony from before? Though to be honest, I'm a little scared of where this is leading. Whoa! Pushing the 3DS grab or the regular DS graphically. The killer and the victim are facing each other. Are, are facing each other over here. Um, 
Then, at the moment the killer raises his weapon, Mr. Sickler shouts. What does he shout? At which point, the victim turns his head to look. And the killer fires his pistol. Okay. That's why the bullet hit him in the right temple. Oh, all right. No contradictions, right? Right. But if Mr. Stickler is standing on the north side of the park, that reverses the whole scenario. Not if it was the other way around. Not if Mr. Stickler was the one shooting him. Completely, if Mr. Stickler shouts from where he is now, the victim looks in his direction, and he gets shot in the left side of the head. I know, but what if Mr. Stickler is the one with the gun, and the guy is talking to the noodle stand man? The bullet would have to hit his left temple. Oh, oh! <laughs> in other words, someone standing at point K wouldn't shoot the victim in his right temple. It's impossible. That's right. So now that we know that Mr. Stickler was standing on the northern side, the wound location takes on an entirely different meaning. Stop yelling at me, Trusy. Jesus, it's fine. Indeed, you are absolutely correct, Fraulein. What, what is the meaning of this? The entry wound was on the right side of the victim's head, correct? Well, the right side of the victim's head is north. North, ah! But that's where the witness Wesley Stickler was standing. Correct, so if he was standing to the north, then the only person here who could have shot the victim in the right temple was Mr. Stickler himself. Yo! Oh, here we go. It's all on now, Mr. Bookman. Order, order, order. Wow, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. She flipped this whole case on its head while I was still figuring it out. Can this just... Oh, what? I like that animation. Oh, I gotta hit this wall. I'm so angry. Please stop hitting the wall. You're gonna punch a hole through it. I've had to patch it up like nine times now. Clarify one point for me if you would, her forehead. What now? Are you truly accusing this college student? Of murder? Well, I can't say he's a, he exactly looks innocent, but something still doesn't feel right. I just can't picture him as the real killer. No, please, looks aside, I'm a really nice guy. All my friends say so. Let's hear what the defense has to say. What are you going to do now, Justice? Should I really accuse Mr. Stickler? Accuse of another crime. No accusation. <sighs> Let's see. The way this is going, I doubt he's going to be the murderer. That would be way too easy. It's going to be someone we haven't met yet. Because that doesn't solve anything about the panty stealing. Or anything like that. So we're still missing pieces. But he's obviously nervous about something. So I have to accuse him of another crime. I don't think Mr. Wet... I don't think Wesley Stickler is a killer. But he's not innocent either. His unusual silence tells me that much. Mr. Stickler, you seem unusually quiet. Tell us why, now. The, the word confession isn't in my dictionary. <laughs> tis, 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 her forehead. I'm afraid it falls to you to elucidate, elucidate her stickler's silence. Hail. Uh, Mr. Justice, you did... What? Oh my god. Mr. Justice, you did say you were accusing the witness just now. Um, for a crime other than murder, your reason? The court's all ears. Guy, I know he's guilty of something. But what crime other than murder is there? Do I have evidence that shows an involvement in some other crime? Your evidence? The court's all eyes, Mr. Justice. Show us the evidence that points to the witness involvement in a crime. Uh, wouldn't it just be the broken... Oh, no, the panties in the back of the... Is that it? Because he, he was driving the car, right? Yeah, he was. There we go. The evidence... Is this? What is that? Women's underwear. <laughs> hey, those are mine. Oh yeah, he's the panty thief, isn't he? Oh, oh, so enticing. So once he flip out, I'm waiting. 
Don't look at me like that. <laughs> I love that long pause. Order, order, order. Mr. Stickler. Well, I can't say this comes as a shock. It's not what it seems. By pack pack three, there, there, there. On the night of the murder, just past 9 p.m., a young girl catches a panty snatcher red-handed. Bravely, she gives chase, but the snatcher flees and hides himself in no other than the Maractus Clinic garage. Aha! Uh -huh. Incidentally, these panties were found in the exhaust pipe of the car there. Presumably, he was trying to... Oh, okay, so I get it now. He wasn't driving... Wait, was he driving the car? I'm still confused on this part. Maybe it's just me not paying full attention, but... Like, is that his car or not? <laughs> because a car did hit Mr. Wright. And that would be the car. But a dead man can't hit Mr. Wright. But it's also claiming that... What? <laughs> I am very confused. Presumably he was trying to hide the evidence of his crime. Ergo, while you may not be a murderer... You're guilty of panty snatching in the first degree. What's second degree panty snatching? Stealing it while they're wearing it. What's third degree panty snatching? Stealing nine of them. <laughs> order, order. Man, that's all you're saying a lot lately, Mr. Judge. Mr. Stickler, you should be ashamed. It's, it's not. What? What is? See? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, he's done. Oh, what is this? Oh, okay, that's it. So we are to understand that you were silent not because you were guilty of murder, but because you lacked the courage to admit your theft of this girl's undergarments? Ahem, perhaps you are not aware that my school's name was originally written for IV. IV stands for intelligence, V stands for valiant, see? You're a boy? I'm not done. Now I'm a major in the science department. And what does science teach if not curiosity? Yes, we of the IVU Science Department are valiantly curious. No challenge is too daunting, and what greater challenge to science than a mystery? What are you talking about? Come on, you're talking about a girl's panties here. No, you do not understand. A mystery is unknown, and unknown- Oh, he's trying to figure out- I bet he saw one of her shows, and he was like, where does the stuff go? I have to know where the stuff goes. Because she used them to make things disappear. And my friends, when it comes to mis mysteries, those panties are the promised land. From the moment I first laid eyes on them, I was compelled to investigate for science. <laughs> a full-size car tire was the only... F wait. A full-size car tire was only the first mystery those panties revealed. A tire? Yes, I saw her do it. She pulled a tire out of those panties. But that's not all. First, there was a tire, then a stew pot, then a frozen chicken. One mystery after another. It was... It was magic. Oh, I remember now. He's one of the regulars in the audience at the Wonder Bar. Huh? He's talking about my magic panties trick. That's a stupid reason to steal things. He's just like, I'm so smart, but I can't figure out this simple magic trick. I just don't understand. A broom from a pair of panties? It mocks the very laws of physics. A broom and a frozen chicken, Trucy? Whatever happened to doves and bunny rabbits? <laughs> yeah, those are kind of weird things to pull out. Look, Apollo, I found a corpse. Just pulls it out of there. Oh my god. Mr. Stickler. You stole this girl's panties understanding a magic trick? For misunderstanding a magic trick. You say panties, but they are so much more than that. For me, they are an object for serious study. I wonder. There has been a recent rash of panty snatchings in the area. Were they all you? I- I am sorry, but I did it for science. Each time I spied a pair of panties flapping in the breeze- Okay, now he's talking too fast. <laughs> I- I don't really- I don't know. I don't really like this character. He's supposed to be, like, quirky, like a bunch of the others, but I just- I don't see it. He's not quite there. He's kind of dull, in fact. Still, that leaves one thing unexplained. You refer to our witnesses under lie, yes? The witness claimed he saw the crime from the south, but it was in fact in the north. Indeed. Would anyone care to explain why he lied about that? Be my guest, Herr Forehead. Me? 
Did I not hear you correctly? Did you not say, do not accuse the witness of murder? Why then did the witness lie about his location at the time of the shooting? Or have you no idea? Apollo, there's something about the way the diagram is arranged right now. When you think about it, right near where Mr. Stickler is standing, isn't there a... Well, Mr. Justice, what say you? Do you have any evidence to show why the witness lied about this location? I don't, I don't know. Uh, where's the diagram? I can't see it. Can I? I don't know. <laughs> There's the face he was talking about. Or whatever that is. And it goes to the other side, too. Do you know why the evidence showed... I don't know why he would... Oh, yeah, okay. It's so obvious now that I think about it. It's uh, the lady's bloomers, isn't it? Because he knew if he got caught, he would die. The evidence that shows why he lied is this. What more panties? How many do you have? I don't even have that many. How many panties are you carrying in your pocket, her forehead? I at least have nine at a time. These are the last honest. <laughs> These are found in a trash can at the park. Looking at the diagram... We can see that the trash can was right next to where the witness stood. Mr. Stickler, you didn't. Alas, I'm a failure as a scientist. I can't unravel the mysteries of the universe. I can't even unravel a pair of panties. So, these panties are your handiwork as well? That night, I had been chased, hounded into the Maractus Clinic garage. Oh, Trucy, like, there. Trucy's right over there, like, I'm coming over there, bitch, and I'm gonna stab you. <laughs> Weeping in frustration, I was forced to abandon my prize. Don't you see how I felt? Uh, believe me, I'd rather not. <laughs> I hid in the garage for a short while, then abandoning the panties I made for home. To avoid the office where the girl works, I went towards the south entrance. When I saw them hanging there on a clothesline by a giant mansion. A giant pair of panties. Apparently, he didn't know those bloomers belonged to the mob. I had them safe in my pocket, ready to take home. And I stumbled upon a murder. The murder of Dr. Maractus. I reported what I had seen, but as I waited for the police to arrive, I got scared. What if they searched me? That's when you dispose of the bloomers. Yes, it was a severe blow to the progress of science, but one that had to be... born? A fascinating if disturbing tale. Oh my god, you freakazoids. Get out of my court, please. I believe this brings today's proceedings to a close. And I'm more than pleased to dismiss the witness for the remainder of the trial. One last thing, if I might. Yes, Prosecutor Gavin? Regardless of where we ended today, some vital points were made. Namely, the defendant, Waki Kataki, was at the scene of the crime. And he was pointing a weapon at the victim. One more thing. Waki Kataki is a clear motive. Indeed, the defendant, Waki Kataki, is still the prime suspect in this case. The only suspect, in fact, assuming there was no one else on the scene at the time. Yet a mystery remains. The location of the wound in the victim's right temple is yet to be explained. Court requests further investigation from both the defense and prosecution. Ja, baby. <laughs> no problem. Very well, this brings the trial for the day to a close. Court is adjourned. I am starting... Oh, finally, I can actually end an episode properly on uh, To Be Continued Note. Um, the prosecutor, Mr. Gavin, is so... I think I hear what a lot of people's complaints are about him is that he's not really fully against Apollo. He's very passive aggressive and he has so much money and not, I don't think he has a whole lot of pride as a prosecutor to the point where he's like, oh, I'll do anything to make sure I win or something like that. He seems to be so almost on Apollo's side. He's just interested in every single situation happening and he's kind of interested to see where Apollo goes. And I think that's where a lot of the lack of conflict comes from so far is the fact that he seems to not directly care in that he's just oh, okay i'll be here i'll do the prosecutor whatever as well the past three have 
actively been like the most horrible people ever. <laughs> well, not not God Godo Gado Godado. Um, he was more of a cool guy, even though he opposed you, but he was still against you. Anyways. Thanks for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and click that subscribe button to become a member of the Dust Brigade today. This episode's been a little slow, but I'm trying a lot of new editing techniques, so um, it took a lot of recording to do. But anyways, I hope you have a wonderful day. Right now.